This engine doesn't run off a combustible fluid or gas, but instead runs off the air that we breathe. But before we feed it this air, the air must be compressed, which leads to several differences between this engine and a conventional combustion engine. In terms of power output, a combustion engine can produce its maximum power right up until the fuel tank is empty, whereas the power output of this engine is determined by the pressure stored in the tank, which means over time the power will decrease gradually as the engine uses more air and the pressure decreases. One option to get around this is to optimise the engine for a much lower pressure and then run it off a regulator so the pressure into the engine will give a more constant power output throughout the pressure decrease in the tank. When doing these engine tests, I use a large compressor tank and have a regulator to adjust the engine pressure. However, because I eventually plan to stick this engine on an aircraft, this regulator is far too heavy. So I'm going to make my own. A pressure regulator has three main components, a spring, a diaphragm and a valve, which all work together to control the output pressure. When air is supplied at the input, it flows through the valve, into the diaphragm and out the other side. And because of this pressure, the diaphragm starts to move up, which closes the valve. Now the pressure at the output is determined by the compression force of the spring. So to reduce and regulate the output pressure, we need to adjust the compression of the spring until it's just a bit less than the upwards pressure on the diaphragm. This way, the valve wants to stay closed when the pressure is set correctly. But if the output pressure drops slightly, the diaphragm will move down and open the valve, bringing the pressure back up. It's essentially a mechanical feedback loop that opens and closes the valve depending on the pressure at the output. Now I bought this large pack of springs a while back and the compression springs are relatively weak. So instead of using a diaphragm, I'm going to use a small diameter syringe as the pressure force will be far less due to the small piston area. And this regulator is absolutely tiny and only weighs about seven and a half grams, which will be perfect for the plane I'm building, assuming it works of course. Which it does sort of work. The pressure is being regulated, but it causes the engine to pulse. The reason for this is the friction caused by the syringe piston requires about 10 psi of pressure difference to start moving. So I think I need to go with a diaphragm design. Side note, using a piston in a regulator isn't actually a radical idea, as I later found out my compressor regulator uses a piston design too. After many iterations and some new stronger springs, I finally got a regulator that was working. The input pressure is 60 psi and the engine is running at about 30 psi. And I can adjust the engine speed by turning this bolt to increase or decrease the compression in the spring. But does this increase the engine runtime? This is a graph of the thrust produced as the air in the tank decreases. And as you can see, it outputs the maximum thrust at the beginning due to the high pressure and then it slowly decreases until the pressure is too low for the engine to run. Now because the regulator is set to keep the pressure at about half of the maximum pressure, we might assume the thrust output should look like this, with a lower peak thrust but a far longer runtime. However, it actually looks like this, which it does have a slightly longer runtime, but not by much. And that's because it still runs at the same efficiency. So the area under this portion of the graph is just spread out over this portion. But maybe this engine isn't optimised to run at the lower regulated pressures. So I decided to build a new engine with some slight modifications. The first being a new cylinder using an acrylic tube to hopefully reduce some friction. And I also chose to 3D print the new piston from PLA on my Prusa Mark III, as it's faster and cheaper than printing the piston out of resin. And because the cylinder is far smoother now, the ridges on the FDM print shouldn't increase the friction. So to optimise this new engine for the lower pressure, I've designed it with this large volume above the piston. The idea is that when the piston is at the top of its stroke, the volume above the piston is one third the volume of when it reaches the bottom. This is because the input pressure is about three times atmospheric pressure. So expanding it by three times should bring the pressure down to one atmosphere at the exhaust, which should hopefully reduce any wasted pressure. But this engine has far less thrust than the old one, which I couldn't understand at first, as the piston and cylinder should have less friction, as well as using more air per cycle due to the expansion volume, which should increase power. But then I realised the other major change to this engine is the spring within the cylinder head, 
which I recently added as it helps to keep the ball valve closed when it's not being pushed open by the piston. From watching the slow-mo of the two engines, it doesn't look like there's much difference between the two, but if we analyse frame by frame, we can see the inlet valve without the spring stays open for a split second longer, allowing more air into the cylinder, which seems like it would be less efficient as more air is wasted out the exhaust ports. However, I now think my expansion design might have a hidden inefficiency. Here we have two engines with identical piston and stroke dimensions, but the engine on the left has the expansion volume above the piston, which allows the air to fully expand within the cylinder, resulting in very little air being wasted out the exhaust. Whereas the engine on the right has zero expansion volume and there is lots of high pressure air exiting the exhaust. But believe it or not, the engine on the right is actually more efficient. And here's why. When the engine on the left reaches the top of its stroke, the inlet valve opens and about 10 cubic centimeters of air enters the cylinder. But for the right hand engine to use the same volume of air, the piston must move down. So now both inlet valves have closed and each engine has used the same 10 cubic centimeters of air. However, the engine on the right is producing far more torque due to the angle of its crankshaft. And even when the left hand engine rotates to the same crank angle, the pressure in the cylinder has now decreased and therefore the torque is still less. So throughout each rotation, the engine on the right consumes the same volume of air, but produces about twice as much torque as the left engine. Which seems counterintuitive at first, but it's all to do with the matching of the pressure expansion and the offset of the crankshaft angle. So I built this new engine which doesn't have a spring and the piston almost touches the top of the cylinder at its highest point. And I also added this 2mm set screw to the piston instead of the previous steel rod, so I can easily adjust the valve timing. But before we look at the data, let's talk about the internet data that is collected about you and how the sponsor of this video, Incogni, can help out. There are these internet data brokers that collect information about you, like your name, age, address, your online shopping habits, and more. And businesses can purchase this information. Now you can reach out to each of these brokers directly to erase the information, however the sheer number of them makes it very difficult and time consuming to do so. Which is where the sponsor of this video Incogni can help out. Incogni reaches out to all the data brokers on your behalf to request removal of your personal data, and because many data brokers continue to collect your data after a removal request, Incogni will monitor the market and request repeat removals if a new record pops up. So that's what makes their yearly subscription so important, because it's not just a one-time wipe of all of your data, but instead a constant automated service to make sure you're protected online. The first 100 people to use the code or the link in the description down below will get 60% off of Incogni. So thanks for Incogni for sponsoring this video, and go check them out in the link in the description down below. So aside from this new engine performing really well, I decided to test how the piston pin affects the performance. Here is one of the first thrust tests, where the thrust decreases linearly with the pressure decrease. But see what happens if I shorten the pin by just 0.1 of a millimetre. It reduces the peak thrust significantly, but also increases the runtime. And what I find interesting is the flattening of this curve at the higher pressures. All these thrust tests are carried out with a 2 litre drinks bottle pressurised to 60 psi, and that's because when I was testing the early versions of this engine, I would pressurise these bottles in my bedroom. So for safety reasons, I didn't want any of them exploding, and thought 60 psi was a safe control variable. But now looking at this thrust curve, I wonder what would happen if we tried some higher pressures. So let's run the tests at 100 psi. Here is the long piston pin result with a peak thrust of 3.5 newtons and a runtime of about 2 minutes. But check out the shorter pin graph. At the higher pressure, the thrust is actually lower. The very early versions of this engine had curved channels printed into the cylinder head to allow better airflow around the ball, but I found this would cause strange misfire effects. where the ball in the valve would be launched far too high and levitate for a split second due to the high speed air flows around it. And at the time, I didn't have any springs to prevent this, so I designed the internal diameter of the cylinder head to be just a little bit larger than the ball. This way, the air flowing into the engine will tend to push the ball back into the valve, and this was enough force to allow the engine to run upside down. 
But with the latest engine, the power comes from the ball lifting off of the valve when the piston hits it. So at higher pressure, the downwards force caused by the airflow is far stronger. Therefore the ball doesn't lift as high and less air enters the engine. And as the pressure slowly decreases, the ball is pushed higher, therefore increasing the thrust. At least to a point where the pressure is then too low to maintain the engine RPM. So this is almost like a self-regulating thrust output built right into the cylinder head without the need for an external pressure regulator. And with some more tuning, I reckon we can flatten this line even more, which will be perfect for flying an aircraft. Now I know we can't really compare this engine to the older engines as we've changed one of the control variables by increasing the pressure, but this new engine is producing 214 newton seconds of efficiency, which compared to the previous engine in my last video is about twice the amount and compared to the last time I made an air powered plane, about 10 times that old engine. And that thing was able to maintain level flight, so I'll be very shocked if this thing doesn't fly. Now even though I reckon this engine will fly, what happens if we make a two cylinder version? The easiest way to achieve this is to simply mount two engines back to back, so they both share the same crankshaft. To do this I had to print these connecting rods that are slightly curved, so they attach to the same rod in the centre, yet still align with the pistons. And they fit into the crankcase just like the single cylinder version, but in opposed directions. The next step is to attach the cylinders and pistons, which are basically the same as the single cylinder engine, apart from the cylinder head, as they need to be plumbed together using an air manifold, which splits the incoming air into two channels and flows through these thin white tubes to each cylinder. Then the ball valves can be inserted into each cylinder head with a 3D printed screw cap to keep it airtight. Well, at least more airtight than the air manifold, which leaked a lot through the o-rings due to a slightly loose design. But that can be fixed later. Let's see if it runs. Although it runs, something isn't quite right. The engine doesn't seem to have any more power than the single cylinder engine and it looks like there is only condensation collecting on one of the cylinders. Anyway, it turns out when I glued the tube into one of the cylinder heads, I accidentally blocked it with glue, so one of the cylinders wasn't getting any air. So with a new cylinder head and air manifold, the engine was now perfectly airtight and sounding much better. With a peak thrust of 4.2 newtons at 80 psi, or equivalent to lifting 428 grams, this engine has a power to weight ratio of nearly 10 to 1, which might be an excellent option for a dragster, but with an efficiency near half of the single cylinder engine, I think I know what I'm going to stick on a plane. Thank you very much for watching.